Physics Form 4 Unit 1 Force and Motion Chapter 1 Movement and Position Learning Objectives Plot and Explain Distance Time Graph Know and Use the Relationship Between Average Speed, Distance Moved and Time Taken Know and Use the Relationship Between Acceleration, Change in Velocity and Time Taken Plot and explain velocity time graphs. Determine acceleration from the gradient of velocity time graph and time axis. Use the relationship between final speed, initial speed, acceleration and distance moved. Average speed. The average speed is the rate of the movement of an object. Average speed is measured by the equation distance over time taken. Distance is known as d and time taken is known as t and the average speed is known as capital S. Now let's discuss some questions related to speed. First question. If a car travels 400 meters in 20 seconds, how fast is it going? Here we can use the equation S equals d over t. The distance traveled is 400 meters and the time taken is 20 seconds. When we apply these data into the equation, we get the answer as 20 meters per second. Second question. If you move 50 meters in 10 seconds, what is your speed? For this also, we can use the same equation. Speed equals distance move over time. The movement of your distance is 50 meters. And the time taken is 10 seconds. So when we apply this data set, we get the answer as 5 meters per second. That means your speed is 5 meters per second. Third question. You arrive in my class 45 seconds after leaving math, which is 90 meters away. How fast did you travel? In this question, there are 90 meters in between the physics and the math classes. So you take 45 seconds to travel from the maths class to the physics class. So here also we can apply to the same equation which is S equals D over T. When you apply the data set as distance as 90 meters and time taken as 45 seconds, you get the answer as 2 meters per second. Distance time graph. In a distance time graph, the y-axis represents the distance, which is measured by the SI unit, meters. The x-axis represents the time, which is measured by the SI unit, seconds. In this particular distance time graph shows a uniform velocity of a moving object, which means the distance increase proportionally to the time the gradient of a distance time graph represents the velocity of the movement. Velocity can be taken as the distance moved which is represented by the y-axis and that can be divided from the time traveled which is represented by the x-axis. So my dear students, you all know that the gradient which is also known as the slope of a graph can be found by dividing the change of y from the change of x. So in this distance and time graph, there are two points, A and B. A can be named as x1, y1 and the B can be named as x2, y2. So the gradient is found by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equation. 
Now we are going to apply the data that can be found from the distance time graph in order to find the gradient which is the velocity of this graph. Y2 is 4 meters. Y1 is 1 meters. From the subtraction of Y2 and Y1, we can find the distance moved. X2 is 5.5 seconds and X1 is 1.5 seconds. From the change in X, we can find the time traveled. Therefore, we can get the velocity of this object which is represented by this distance time graph as 3 over 4 meters per second. This figure shows several types of distance time graphs that can be plotted according to different types of movements of an object. First of all, we will look at the pink color steady speed graph. It is starting from the zero distance and it increases the distance over time. It has a uniform velocity. When we compare the blue color graph with the pink color steady speed graph, the blue color graph has a larger slope which shows a fast velocity. And then we will look at the pink color stationary graph. It does not show an increase or decrease of the distance with the time. Therefore, the object is not moving at this stationary phase. And then we will look at the pink color graph which represents returning to start. It has an initial distance and with the time flies, the distance becomes zero. And the velocity of this returning to start graph becomes negative. When we consider the whole pink color distance time graph, which includes the steady speed, stationary and returning to start, it does not have any displacement, which means the displacement of that object is zero. Let's say that this movement has done by a car. The movement of the car has an increase in distance over time, which means the car started from the zero distance and the sp distance increased with the time. And after some time, the car rested for some seconds and then the car started to return to the starting point. Finally, we will talk about the green color distance time graph which shows getting faster. In this distance time graph it shows an increasing velocity. The change of the distance is smaller at the beginning of the movement and when the time flies the change of the distance increases. Therefore, it shows an increasing velocity, which is also called as the acceleration. The difference between speed and velocity. Speed is the change of distance over time. Distance is a scalar quantity, which only has a magnitude. And the velocity is the dis change of displacement over time. The displacement means it's a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and the direction. Acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change in speed of an object that is moving. Acceleration can be calculated by the change of velocity over time taken. Therefore, we can use the equation acceleration equals to final velocity subtracted by the initial velocity over time taken. In simple form, we can take v minus u over time. Here there is a problem related to acceleration. A car starts from a spotlight and is traveling with a velocity 
of 10 meters per second is in 20 seconds what is the acceleration of the car so here we can use the equation a equals v minus u over t v is the final velocity which the car arrives after 20 seconds and the car starts from a spotlight that means the initial velocity is zero so when we apply this data into this equation we can get the acceleration as 0.5 meters per second squared velocity time graph the y-axis of the velocity time graph shows the velocity the units of velocity is meters per second the x-axis shows time the units of time is seconds so with the gradient of the velocity time graph we can get the acceleration which is the change of velocity that is represented by the y-axis over the time traveled which is represented by the x-axis when we consider the graph that you can see on the video there are two points a and b a can be named as x1 y1 and b can be named as x2 y2 so the gradient of this graph which is the acceleration can be taken by this data therefore y2 is 8 meters per second and y1 is 2 meters per second x2 is 2 seconds and x1 is 1 seconds when we apply this data into the equation we get the acceleration or the gradient as 6 meters per second square the area falls under velocity time graph represent the displacement since the graph that has shown on the screen has a uniform acceleration this area can be measured by the equation that we use to measure the area of a triangle therefore the area can be taken by multiplying half by velocity and time the displacement of this particular velocity time graph is 25 meters this figure shows different types of velocity time graphs that can be plotted in the first blue acceleration graph it shows an increasing velocity over time and then from 20 to 40 seconds it shows steady speed graph which means the speed does not increase and the speed remains the same for the within this 20 seconds and then from 40 to 50 seconds it shows the green color the acceleration graph that means the speed decreases with the time and then from 50 to 90 seconds it shows an increasing acceleration graph which means the acceleration increase with the time the initial acceleration change is smaller than the final acceleration change equations of uniformly accelerated motion first equation equation that uses time in deriving the first equation we use the equation that is used to find the acceleration which is a equals v minus u over t a stands for acceleration v stands for final velocity u stands for initial velocity while t stands for the time from this equation we take t to the other side of the equal mark by a multiplication from that we get v minus u equals a t and then we are taking u to the other side of the equal mark by adding u to the other both of the sides so then we get v equals u plus a t so this equation can be used for uniformly accelerated motion second equation equation that uses displacement s 
In order to derive this equation, we use two equations that we have learned earlier. First one is the equation that we use to find the acceleration. A equals V minus U over T. From that, we derive V minus U equals AT and we mark that equation as the first equation. And then we take the equation that we use to find the area of the graph. That means the displacement. Here we have shown a graph that has a displacement with an initial velocity and a final velocity. The area of this graph can be found by the equation that we use to find the area of the trapezium. Therefore, the displacement of this graph can be found by half multiplied by V plus U multiplied by T. From that particular equation, we take T out of the equation and write down as T equals 2S over V plus U. And we mark down that equation as the second equation. And then we are going to combine first and the second equations that we have marked by applying the first equations T to the second equations T. That means we are eliminating T and applying S to the equations. And then we are going to simplify these two equations. And then we get the new equation as V square equals U square plus 2AS. So these are the two equations of uniformly accelerated motions. V equals U plus AT. V square equals U square plus 2AS. Where V stands for final velocity, U initial velocity, A acceleration, T time, S displacement. So now we will try to solve a problem related to uniformly accelerated motions. A train breaks from 40 meters per second to stop over a distance of 100 meters. What is the acceleration of the train? How much time does it take the train to stop? So in this question, the initial velocity u, 40 meters per second, and the final velocity, when the train stops, it is zero. So then the distance has already given, which is 100 meters. Therefore, we can use the formula relates to these three quantities, which is v square equals to u square plus 2as. From that, we can get, after applying this data, as acceleration equals to minus 8 meters per second square. We got minus for the acceleration because it is a deacceleration. If we use the word deacceleration, then we don't need to mention it as minus. But since we use the word acceleration, we use minus for the deacceleration. Let's move on to the question B. How much time does it take the train to stop? So we should find the time. So the time involves in the equation V equals U plus AT. From that, we can apply our data and find the time as 5 seconds. My dear students, we have reached the end of the lesson. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.